The subject of our bell work problem today is the Porsche 918 Spider. It's one of the fastest production street vehicle vehicles that you can buy. I've come up with a velocity versus time graph for the Porsche 918 Spider. We see that from rest, the Porsche sitting still, and then we see it take off go for a constant speed for a short duration, slow down for a little while, then go at a constant speed for a little while again before coming to an abrupt stop. So this is the velocity versus time graph for a short trip in our Porsche 918 Spider. What I'd like for you to do today, and I want to make sure that you have this skill in hand, because you're going to be tested on it, and you're going to apply those skills in your project too you need to be able to calculate, not only calculate acceleration from a graph when the initial time is zero, but I want you to be able to calculate acceleration for any segment on this graph, regardless of when your initial time and when your final time is. So today what I'd like for you to do is to calculate the acceleration of the Porsche 918 Spider in the interval between time equals 10 seconds and time equals 15 seconds. Now, this is our given information. Remember I tell you that I always want you to guess at these problems. And G in guess stands for the given information. When you are given a graph, you're given a lot of information. So everything we need, we should be able to pull from this graph. And you know from previous problems that we've worked, acceleration, which I write as A, is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Now we've talked about change in velocity being the final velocity minus the initial velocity, but we haven't talked about the change in time so much. Usually we've just had one time, so the time went from zero to five, and so the time was five seconds. But what if we are looking at a time that's a little further out? So let me expand on the delta change in to say usually what, and, and you'll, re you'll remember that usually what we had in the top is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. But here in the denominator, I want to write that time as well as the final time minus the initial time. Okay. So here's our formula. It's just a little bit different than what we've been seeing before. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to the trouble to use the document camera to show you how to organize your work on the paper. I know that um, a lot of times when I'm working at the board, I'm not the best example to follow. If you're serious about a career in science and engineering, you really need to um, take the time to organize your work because the problems that you're going to be working are, are multiple steps and you'll just get lost if you're not organized. Okay, so I've written my equation. Now then usually what I do is I drop down and give another equal sign where I plug in my values. Now the final value for this problem for uh, velocity, the final vo value for the velocity is 25 meters per second. The initial velocity was up here at 35 meters per second. I can begin to smell a fish already. Tell you what I mean by that. In this case, our initial velocity is less, I mean, our retract that. In this case, our final velocity is less than our initial velocity. So you have to write these in the right order in order to get the right result. Now time, and this is why I wrote it out in an expanded form like this, our final time is 15 seconds and our initial time is 10 seconds. So then I, I plug in everything and then as I solve my problem I just keep going down the page here. 25 minus 35 is, aha, negative 10. 15 minus 10 is a positive 5. 
So you can already see that we're getting a negative result. And we should because the slope of the line on the velocity versus time graph is negative up here. It's a downward slope. So our answer, if we're making calculations off of that, is going to be negative. So negative 10 over 5 is equal to a negative 2. A negative 2 what, I always say? You have to use the proper units. In this case, we're talking about meters per second over second or meters per second squared. When I look at your work, I'm looking for a neat presentation. I'm looking for the equation where you plug the numbers in, your substitution, and your solving. I'm definitely looking for a negative because that tells me a lot about whether you understand this particular problem, and I want to see your units. If you don't give me units, you get the wrong sign, you're not going to get maximum points.